Of the many unique prayers read during the period of Great Lent in the lead up to Easter in the Orthodox Church is a fascinating one of repentance and forgiveness. It is over 2,000 years old and its name links it to one of the worst kings recorded in the entire Bible. The prayer of Manasseh is considered by many people to be an apocryphal work, that is, we do not know its exact origins. It may not go back all the way to King Manasseh, who is recorded as having lived in the books of Kings and of Chronicles in the Old Testament, but whether the prayer is apocryphal or not, whether it is 2,000 years old or two and a half thousand years old, it is a prayer very much worth the hearing. It is a soul-searching and heart-wrenching display of repentance that calls upon the beauty of God's forgiveness. While the prayer is not so well known now, it is present in many famous Bibles of history, and a copy of it was found amongst the Dead Sea Scrolls. It is recorded in the 4th century Latin Vulgate Bible, in Martin Luther's 16th century German Bible, and there's a copy of it in the 17th century King James Bible. This prayer is a big part of our Christian history. While it is not in every single Orthodox Bible today, it remains an annual Orthodox tradition to chant this prayer during the Lenten service of Great Compline. Great Compline is an Orthodox service about repentance, and for us, repentance is more than just saying sorry. Repentance is a process of healing, a process of growing closer to God. Repentance is defined as a changing of one's mind, a transforming of oneself. The focus of repentance is less about the sin and more about the mercy and the love of God. The prayer of Manasseh is named for an ancient Hebrew king. He was the heir of King Hezekiah, and the genealogy in the Gospel of Matthew actually records him as being one of the ancestors of Christ. But for the majority of Manasseh's reign, as recorded in the biblical books of Kings and Chronicles, Manasseh is absolutely awful. He is one of the worst kings that the Bible ever describes. He sins so badly that the book of Chronicles actually says that under his reign, the people of Israel are doing more evil in that land than has existed since before they even arrived there. He imported many foreign gods, many different evil traditions, including child sacrifice, which was happening all over the country. King Manasseh was closely aligned with the kingdom of Assyria, and this was a very warlike empire, and in Assyrian records that have been found by archaeologists, Manasseh is mentioned favorably several times. It is quite likely that it was in pleasing these Assyrian overlords, this powerful empire, that Manasseh brought so much evil into his kingdom. So, Manasseh's reign is really overladen with just a lot of horrible stuff. But then there is a falling out. The Bible records that these same Assyrians that he's been trying so hard to please capture him for some reason, we aren't told what, and take him to their kingdom where he is put in chains into prison. And there, in the darkness of his cell, in the pain that he is experiencing, he suddenly comes to his senses and he cries out to God. He begs for forgiveness. And this problem with the Assyrians is, again, without explanation, dealt with and he is returned to his kingdom, but he has been transformed. And the Bible records that he reverses many of his policies and brings the focus of God back to his people. We are also told of this powerful prayer of repentance, and we are told in scriptures that it is recorded in another book. This prayer of Manasseh that is recited annually in the Orthodox Church is representative, or indeed is, that prayer. And we read it annually because it is such a powerful display of God's forgiveness. And the prayer is as follows. O Lord Almighty, God of our ancestors, of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and of their righteous offspring, you who made heaven and earth with all their order, who shackled the sea by your word of command, who confined the deep and sealed it with your terrible and glorious name, at whom all things shudder and tremble before your power, for your glorious splendor cannot be borne and the wrath of your threat to sinners is unendurable. Yet immeasurable and unsearchable is your promised mercy, for you are the Lord Most High of great compassion, long-suffering and very merciful, and you relent at human suffering. O Lord, according to your great goodness, you have promised repentance and forgiveness to those who have sinned against you, and in the multitude of your mercies you have appointed repentance for sinners, so that they may be saved. Therefore you, O Lord, God of the righteous, have not appointed repentance for the righteous, for Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, who did not sin against you, but you have appointed repentance for me, who am a sinner. For the sins I have committed are more in number than the sand of the sea. 
My transgressions are multiplied, O Lord, they are multiplied. I am not worthy to look up and see the height of heaven because of the multitude of my iniquities. I am weighted down with many an iron fetter, so that I am rejected because of my sins, and I have no relief, for I have provoked your wrath, and I have done what is evil in your sight, setting up abominations and multiplying offenses. And now I bend the knee of my heart, imploring you for your kindness. I have sinned, O Lord, I have sinned, and I acknowledge my transgressions. I earnestly implore you, forgive me, O Lord, forgive me. Do not destroy me with my transgressions. Do not be angry with me forever or store up evil for me. Do not condemn me to the depths of the earth. For you, O Lord, are the God of those who repent. And in me you will manifest your goodness, for unworthy as I am, you will save me according to your great mercy. And I will praise you continually all the days of my life. For all the hosts of heaven sings your praise, and yours is the glory forever. Amen. For me, one of the powers of this prayer is that the sins he committed are greater than most of us are ever even able to commit. And yet, even he was able to call out to a God who heard him, who forgave him. And so now the name Manasseh isn't connected in the church to evil and to horrible things. It is connected to a prayer prayed by all of us together as a community every single year during Great Lent. May God be with you on this Lenten journey towards the resurrection of Jesus Christ. We are accompanying an episode with a very simple peppermint tea, and we hope to see you again next week. So I, the thing for me was to make sure that you, we can introduce adequately King Manessa so that we can actually go, whoa, that's a repentance. Like, the, the war, that because it's beautifully written, but also like God forgave him which makes, I think, sometimes it makes us uncomfortable that God can forgive us because we get uncomfortable with the idea of someone so sinful being forgiven, but mm -hmm. then we forget that we can be pretty sinful ourselves. <laughs>